Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Himani Singh, working as an assistant professor in Institute of Business Management, GLA University, Mathura. I welcome you to the session 6 of the course that's Professional Communication for Managers. Session 6 is on business letters. So, by the end of this session, you all will be able to understand different aspects of writing a business as well as you will be able to know that what are the basics and the perquisites for writing a, or drafting a letter with a positive or routine message as well as how it is differentiated from a negative message and what points you need to remember while drafting a negative message or a letter. So now let's begin with the session. But before moving on to the positive or the routine or the negative messages, first I am going to highlight the basics of letter writing. Yes, in the previous session, we talked about certain strategies. Apart from that, I just want to focus upon two major things that while drafting a letter, either you are going to adopt a direct approach, which is also known as deductive approach, also, you can use an indirect approach known as inductive approach. When I say direct approach, it simply means that you are going to start your message directly by the message which you want to convey. But in the indirect method, you are not going to first state the message which you want to convey, but you are going to base or you are going to build a base and then you will be talking about the information which you want to share through that letter. I am going to talk in detail that how direct approach differs from the indirect approach. If you believe that after reading that letter or that message, your audience are going to be interested, they are going to be happy or either they are going to be neutral also, then in that case, it is good to go for direct approach. But if in case you are aware that your audience might be displeased or they are unwilling to hear that news or that information, then in that case, you should go on for adopting the indirect approach. Apart from this, yes, you need to look for that if you are going for a direct approach, what is going to be your message opening or how you should go on for the opening the message, opening the letter. In direct approach, you should focus upon the main idea. Rather than starting the information from here and there, you should focus directly that what's the purpose of writing, what information you want to share. Whereas, if in case your audience, you believe that they are not going to be pleased enough, then in that case, you should start your statement with a buffering statement, which can also be called as a neutral statement, a general statement wherein nowhere it is going to be mentioned the negative news or by which that person is going to be shocked out. If you believe that the person is uninterested, then in that case, you can go on for starting with a statement or a question mark, arising a question in the mind of the audience. So this is how you can go on for starting your idea or starting your message. And then how you are going to frame the uh, body of the message. If you are going for direct approach, it is the best idea to give directly the necessary details. Just after stating the issue, just after stating the information, jump on to the necessary details. Whereas when we talk about the indirect approach, after going for stating a neutral statement, then try to go on for giving the justification about that negative news, 
about the news which you believe, which you believe that is not a negative, but you believe that the audience is going to be displeased somewhere, right. So, in that case you can go on for giving the reason, but if you know that the person is unwilling to listen, to understand the information which you want to share, in that case you should try to build a reputation with those statements, you should use those statements by which you can think that you can build the reputation between you and the audience. So this is how direct approach and indirect approach you should flow with. But if I talk about the closure aspect that how you are going to close the message, yes in the direct approach you have stated the problem, you have elaborated it that means you have given the necessary details and towards the end come up with a cordial comment, thank you looking forward for a reply such kind of phrases you can use and similarly if it is a indirect approach also then also you should go on for adopting or closing the message cordially with some kind of request action which you believe needs to be taken care and you should end on the positive tone. So irrespective you are using direct approach or indirect approach, the closure needs to be same somewhere or the other, you need to focus upon being more courteous, yes, when we are talking about uh, indirect approach, therein also you need to be courteous and in the direct approach. Now again, it depends from situation to situation, as well as your personality and temperament that tends to set that whether you will be going for direct or you will be going for indirect. Apart from this, it is not only always an individual's temperament or personality, many a times it is being set by the organization itself, that is the template of the organization, that organization believes that whatsoever letter we are going to send, we will start or we will follow it with direct approach or we will be following it with the indirect approach. So if that is the case, then you need to keep aside your personality temperament, you need to go with the organizational setting. You need to look for that what organization is demanding for. So yes, these are some of the factors which tend to impact that whether you will be going for a direct approach or you will be going for indirect approach. Now moving forward, yes, I am going to talk about the different techniques which you can use for developing the paragraphs of your letters. When I was talking about drafting a letter, I told you that yes, it is a three stage process. First is you will be planning, in the second stage you will be talking about drafting the message and the third stage is about you are going to go for rephrasing or rewriting kind of stage. Now here I am going to focus upon that what is going to be the content in your paragraph, how you are going to articulate those words, how you are going to articulate your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings in words so that it should look formal and at the same time it is able to convey the meaning in the similar manner in which you wanted to convey. So the very first technique which we tend to use is that is illustration. Now illustration is basically you can quote certain examples, you can quote names of big companies or big competitors or big customers of yours to develop a reputation between you and the audience. For example, you are coming up with some new product or service which you want that you should go on for elaborating or expanding your network. And now it is more available to different sector people, different geographical locations, earlier it was not available. So now what you can do is in your body of the paragraph wherein you want to tell your customers that why they should go on for taking up this product or service, you can quote some example that see these are the big players who are dealing into our business, who are taking up our products and services from a long time. So this is how you can quote certain examples wherein you can illustrate that scene. They were our, they are the valued customers and they have given and provided us with the very good feedback. So this is how you can frame that sales letter 
and you can frame your paragraphs. Second technique is you can go on for comparison or the contrast. Take example that uh, you are inviting applications for new recruitments. Now in this you are recruiting on masses in a big number. So in that case in the paragraph of your letter you can explain you can tell that in the past we were a small company we were not into so much of diversification we were not that much big business but now as from last one year we are growing a lot we are expanding our business we are diversifying so there's a need to get good people onto these 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 competencies these skills so how it's going to help you out see this is able to create a contrasting or a comparison impact that now why my organization is looking for more people now it's very clear in the mind of the other person who is reading the letter that why I want more training or more competencies in new people because now I'm growing and I want big numbers also next in line the other technique which you can go on for giving cause and effect focusing on reasons for something for example, you received a complaint letter, right? And the customer is complaining that the product, what he received is damaged or something like that. Now to reply, what you can do is you can go on for adopting the cause and effect approach, wherein what you will be doing, you will be stating the causes that these are the causes due to which that particular product got damaged and that's why this was the impact. So what you did, you have adopted the cause and effect technique to frame your paragraphs of the letter. The next approach can be classification. Classification is wherein you want to tell the other person or the audience about different aspects of particular information. So in that classification, you can go on for classifying things on certain basis. You can look for the basis define those bases and then on the basis you can go on for giving the classification now this is also a very good method when you are sharing some information in bulk with the people and you want them to be aware of each and every intricacies of that particular information so that's a good idea that classify it rather than just giving in it into long paragraphs classify the things with the proper headings so that it becomes more easily to comprehend the information. The last technique which you can always go on for adopting here is that's problems and solution. Wherein you will be stating that yes, this is the problem and I request you to go for this solution. For example, you are a customer, a very annoyed customer who has received some wrong product and now what you are going to do when you are going to write a letter first you should state the problem very clearly state the problem that what the problem is all about then moving further you should tell that what should be the possible solution which you think can be go for it so that is what is problem solution approach which you can give so Dear learners, these are the five distinct approaches and techniques which you can go on for developing the main paragraphs, the main body of your business letters. Now moving further, I will be talking about the different technology which we are using these days for shaping our business messages. Yes, in fact, you people when you draft certain messages, you are also utilizing these things. These are very common terms these days in this virtual world because we are going for making our letters into more sophisticated with which are more technology driven, right? So yes, you can go on for taking help of style sheets or templates. So somewhere you just need to put your information into that template and things will be done. Not just style sheets and templates, you can go on for smart documents or master documents, auto completion, auto correction. Now, when I say auto completion, for example, so what you can do is if you want to insert the name of your company, the address of your company, the mobile number, email address, and two, three more information, right? So if you are using this 
feature that's auto completion you will be just writing the initial few letters of your company name all the information will come so yes that's a, again a tool which is going to help you in simplify the work because in every letter you need to have that particular information so you can go on for that or you can use auto correction also again you need to be very very sure with auto correction because many at times you forget to use or how to use this particular feature also end notes footnotes wizards so see dear learners these are the tools which are available to you for making your business letters more impactful more effective so you can use any of these tools or a combination of these tools to make your business letters look more impactful moving further i will be first taking care of strategy for the routine request see as i started the session and i said that i'll be covering three different aspects one is that you are going to how you are going to frame the messages or the business letters when it is a routine request or when you are going to write some positive messages how you are going to frame it and the third category that if it is a negative message how you are going to convey that negative message to your people now when i say strategy for routine request yes the very first point remember always stating your request up front stating it very clearly that what your request is all about and the very first point talks about pay attention to tone for example if i am requesting you that i want some routine information regular information right so there can be two ways of stating that thing i am simply saying you are required to submit that information to me right this is one way second way is please provide me with the details of this what you think is more effective a or b i believe b because in b the tone which i am using is not of giving order it is again i am being courteous i am being humble so always remember that when you state your inf uh, problem or when you state that what you require state it clearly but with a very positive tone so you can look for having positive tone i have only written tone so make sure it needs to be a positive tone apart from this also when you frame the sentences when you when you go on for writing routine request again i am saying routine request it's not a special request it's a routine or a regular thing which is happening so in that case you should assume that your audience are going to comply you should not keep on focusing submit the record submit the record again and again you are using this line in your business letter never don't go for that because if it is a routine request the audience also know the person the receiver who is receiving that letter he also knows that he needs to comply because that's a regular message that's a routine message you need not to say it again that this is the deadline this is the thing if you will not do it i'll do this no not at all never never do this right so assume that your audience are going to comply also be very very specific be specific most of the time what we do is provide me with the sales data now again what kind of sales data you are talking about you are talking about march sales data whole year sales data five year sales data or what so yes whenever you are going for a routine kind of information still it's a routine but make sure you are specifying it that up to which month up or which days you want that is what is adding specificity to your message apart from this make sure that you are able to explain and justify your request yes you should justify you are not going to go on for demanding any xyz request you should explain that why why this information is actually important so for that you can go on for all these parameters justify the request or explain its importance tell the person that this data this sales data is required for compiling the marketing characteristics or the customer characteristics that's why i require this 
state the problem, state the importance that why are you requiring this particular data. Not just this, in fact, you can also tell the benefits of responding. I can tell the person that if you are going to provide me with the sales data as early as possible, I will be able to figure it out that where or in which territories we are not having good customers. So, it will provide you with the list that which territories to be catered most, which territories to be focused more upon. So, this is again a benefit which I am telling the audience also, the receiver that see if you will provide me this data, I will be providing you with this information because once you provide me with the data, I am going to analyze it and I have to analysis, I will be providing it to you. So, yes, look for trying to tell the benefits to your people. Also, ask the most important questions first that if, if something is there in your mind, if you are, uh, you want to go for a routine request, you want to have, you are having five different requests, state it clearly. It should not be only sales data, with sales data what else I want or in, in sales data, I want these four things, four particular information, not the whole 10 information, 10 points, I do not want that. So, ask questions and then state it. Also break complex request into individual questions, that is what I was just telling you about, that if it is, uh, that data is having 10 different sets, if you want only one, state it clearly, that is what you want. Not just this, in fact, always remember that your request should be stated in the most courteous way. Again, I am saying that it might be a regular request, a routine request, but you need to be as courteous as possible. So, express your gratitude, clearly state important deadlines. Now, I just want to share some of the common examples of routine requests. One can be that you are just asking for some information and its action to be taken. This is one example for a routine request that you are in a, to a situation wherein you are asking some person about some information and you want him to take some action regarding that. Now, my suggestion to this particular situation is that you should always go on for using direct approach. Do not go for the indirect one because you want a piece of information, right? And you want some action to be taken care of. Why to go on for indirect approach? That is a common phenomenon, that is a regular phenomenon where I believe that the receiver is also uh, somewhere clear that I will be getting this kind of request. For example, if it is a salesperson, right, for sure I will be asking him sales reports of his area. So, he is aware about it, that what is what I can ask him to do. So, if you are asking some information to him, go for using direct approach. I will be showing you a sample that how you can frame the sentence. Dear Smith, please provide additional information on distribution opportunities. See what I have done here is, I have clearly stated, I have started the sentence with my point. That see, I want the information on distribution opportunities for your Palmolive product line as specified on your website. I have indicated that what kind of information I am requiring, right? Also with this, because I am asking for a request, so I need to tell something about myself as well. So what I am doing is, Shilex is a 30 year old firm with well established retail and service presence. So, what I am doing? I am just telling an idea that why I want this information, why I am looking for this information. You can see that in the end I have added that and we believe your anti-aging products would make a compelling addition to our offerings. I have very strategically told you that why I want this information, right? Remember I said that state the information tell the benefit, tell that person that why you want it, I have told him. The next thing in this letter is a very important aspect. See, I wanted to have information linked with these three different areas. If I would have clubbed all this information in a paragraph, then it would have been messy for the person, for the audience 
to comprehend this information. So, what I did was I segregated all the points that see first is do you offer exclusive regional distribution contracts because I am looking for this information because I want to have this uh, distribution contract. Do you offer special training for our sales and service specialist? This is again another thing which I am looking for. Also, I am looking for the diversification. So, these were the three different points, three distinct points which were coming under the distribution opportunities. So, distribution opportunities was a vague term. Under this, these three things were falling and I have very clearly stated this. So, this is just a small sample for framing your sentences. Moving forward, I am going to talk about the another aspect, the second example under the routine request is asking for recommendations. In the previous session, I told you that what we mean by a letter of recommendation. Letter of recommendation is a kind of reference letter which you might be writing for some other person to justify his or her credentials or competencies to his some joining organization, right. So, when we talk about and yes, uh, there are again that is a kind of routine request why I am putting it into a routine request because somewhere it is a kind of request which we tend to get from the people around us. That is not a special thing, anything positive or anything negative, but yeah, that is a routine way. Now, when we say asking for recommendations, always remember one thing, seek permission before using someone as reference, always remember this point. It is always advisable that when you go on for asking for a recommendation letter to be written by a person, first seek his permission, that is he ready to give his reference to you? Otherwise, if he denies at that point of time, you should never go and ask him for writing or you should never write a letter to him to provide you with the recommendation letter. So, that is always a good gesture that you should always seek his, perm his or her permission. Also, refresh of the memory of any potential reference you have not been in touch for a while. That is also, I will be just showing you another example, another sample for asking for recommendations how you are going to start this letter. I recently interviewed with Shilex Limited and have been called for the final interview or for their strategic analyst position. Now, in the very first line, what I have told, not exactly the purpose, but purpose for writing is indicated. Go for the second line, they have requested at least one recommendation, fine, from a professor. I immediately thought of you, may I have a letter of recommendation from you, fine. As you may recall, I was a gold medalist from 2017 to 19 batch. My enclosed resume includes all my recent and relevant work experience. Also, I completed my strategic analytics. What you are doing in the second paragraph? Did you notice? You are just trying to make that person remember what you did in past, where you were good, where you were competent, so that he can refresh his memories of you. In the first paragraph, you should go on for stating the purpose clearly, that why you want the recommendation letter. In the second paragraph, you should go on for making the other person memorize that yes, who was this person and what you have done in past when you were working with him or when you were working under him whatsoever. If possible, the HR of Shalex Limited needs to receive your letter by April 19. What you have done in the third one? The timeline. That is quite important. Because of course, if you also want to submit a letter of recommendation, you might be having certain timeline, you might be, you people might have told you that see this is the timeline, by this time we want this letter. So, timeline is another thing. So, for your convenience, see this is again a good gesture, for your convenience I have enclosed a pre-addressed stamped envelope, that is a positive gesture, that see I am being courteous enough to think that it should not cause you any problem. You just need to write a letter, put it in the envelope and 
things will move on. So I really appreciate your time, how you are ending on a cordial note. So this is how you can frame your sentences. First is you should indicate the purpose, then you should make that person memorize, then the timeline and then you should go on for cordial ending. Fine. So this is a one sample for recommendations. Now the third thing in the routine request is that you are going to be in these situations wherein you will be making certain claims or certain adjustments. Now again when I say adjustments of claims always remember just remember few points that you should go on for explaining the problem and give details. Don't simply say that your, the product which I have received that was damaged. No, that's not a problem. You are, you are not stating the problem in very clear manner. Just state it very clearly that what was the product, where it went wrong, what was the invoice number, what was the bill number, all such things, right? Provide backup information. Request for specific action is again another aspect of this particular claim or adjustment letters. Always be prepared that somewhere you should have the documents for your claim and send copies and keep the original documents with you. Remember this thing, don't send the original bill copies to the people. Send the photostats or the Xerox copies of them. Don't send them the original copies. I'll show you one sample for this. Now, when we say responding to a claim, right, it can be three things, three things that either your company is at fault or customer is at fault or some third party is at fault. First, we'll be talking about that how to respond to a claim when your company is at fault and you know that yes, whatever product or service went wrong, the fault was of the company. So in that case, you really need to take care of your customer or of the person who is complaining to you, right? So always start with acknowledging the receipt of that particular customer's complaint. Always acknowledge. Because when you are going to start with this acknowledgement, the audience, that audience is going to take that you are thinking for him also. You are not thinking only about the organization. So yes, you should always go on for acknowledging. Not just acknowledge, take personal responsibility. If you are somewhere wrong, if you know that yes, the fault has taken place from our end, take responsibility. The more you are going to take responsibility, it can be the audience will take you in a very positive manner and the, that is going to actually pacify the situation. They are not going to be now more argumentative or more um, somewhere angry, no. N more aggressive, no, they are not going to be. Sympathize with the customers, right? This is a strategy which you should go on for. Discuss your plan to resolve some situation. Now you should always have a plan, but how you're going to resolve it. See, I have one comprehension in this. Many a times companies do ask their customers also, that what you prefer, that's completely good, but always have a plan from your end because you cannot go, as a company, you cannot go and satisfy each and every customer as per their own wish. So you should always have a plan of action that how you want to sort these things out, right? Strategize to repair the relationship as well as follow up to verify. I'll just tell you that how all these points can be covered in a sample. Dear Mr. Alvin, your email message concerning your recent, recent Safar stop has been forwarded to our director of fulfillment. So what you did in the first line? Acknowledgement. Fine. Your complete satisfaction is our goal and a customer service representative will contact you within 24 hours to assist you with the issues raised in your letter. Herein you tried to build reputation and you have also provided with the timeline. In the meantime, please accept the enclosed voucher. What you are doing here? Taking personal responsibility with, with, you are helping customer to pacify. 
Now see, this is again strategy as per the organization. Organization to organization, this strategy might vary, right? Thank you for taking the time and your inputs help us. You are again ending into the cordial way. So see, if it is a claim letter, make sure that you are pacifying the customer, you are sympathizing the customer, you are taking responsibility, you are acknowledging so that the things can be moving in the right direction. Now the second thing, responding to a claim. When you know that your company is not at fault, in fact, the customer is at fault or something wrong has happened from the customer's end. Now in this situation also, don't go on for adopting and telling the customer that you are wrong. Never do this. So do not refuse claim. Even if you know that you are not wrong, but still you should not refuse the claim. And because if you are going to refuse, you may be losing the customer because that person is not in that state of mind that he is going to accept his fault because he is complaining to you. And if he is complaining to you, why he is going to accept as his fault, his or her fault? Fine. So do not refuse claim, first thing. I am not saying that you should accept it. There is a big difference in that. But I am simply saying that do not refuse it. Don't accept, but don't refuse it. Weigh the cost of making the adjustment. This is again your company aspect. If you believe that you cannot lose this customer, this customer is very precious for the business of your organization. Then you need to go for this. That whether you want to accept this as a fault or you really don't want to cater to this need. Because if he is going for undue advantages or undue demands, then of course you need to think about that is it worth enough to go for and accept his demands? If it is not, then don't go for it. Right? Again, this you need to decide wisely. Also, language should be tricky. It should not be that you are telling the person that you were wrong, you were wrong. No, it needs to be very, very, very tactful. Close with the lines that you value customer. I'll show you another sample for the same. Dear Mr. Karan, we are sorry. Why I am highlighting this point? Because you are starting with a note wherein you are not refusing the complaint of the customer that you are not completely satisfied with your Shilex vacuum cleaner. You are entirely justified in expecting more than four years of reliable use from an Shilex appliance and we are always eager to service any product that does not for some reason live up to the standard. What you did? Such a beautiful line. What you did? You simply told the person that yes, you are not wrong if you are expecting more than that, but somewhere we are also at your service. Apart from this, look into the second paragraph. We appreciate your giving us the opportunity to examine the damaged vacuum cleaner. According to our service department, the filter had never been replaced. Although the owner's manual advises replacement every few months, what I did I told the person that why the problem arises. Did I say that as a customer you are wrong? No. In this sentence, I simply stated that what my technical team believes that it should be done and somewhere might be it has not been done by you. Although I never used the word you or you attitude, don't use it. As a result, the motor itself gradually became clogged with dust and dirt. The cost of repairing and cleaning the vacuum is an estimated rupees 500. If you would like to have it repaired, please let us know with regular cleaning and replacement of the filter and so on. So I hope this comes to you that yes, I completely agree that the customer is at fault, but somewhere I am not blaming you as a customer. Fine. Moving forward, responding to a claim where third party is at fault. Fine, you are into the business, you are receiving some complaint, but neither the company is at fault nor the customer is at fault. 
a third party somewhere from where you are getting the supplies and you are uh, selling it to the customer. So, it's the third party who was involved. But remember one thing, for the customer, you are the party. You are the company, right? So, evaluate the case and review company's policies thoroughly as well as avoid placing blame on the some third person. As I said that for the customer, it's you only. It's you only who has provided with the product or the service. They don't know any third party. So don't go on for putting blame in front of them that this happened due to this or due to that particular third person. No, not at all. A big no to that. Focus on the solution. Tell how it can be rectified. What it is going to be done now. What is going to be the solution? That should be your focus upon. Tell customer how problem can be resolved. So this is again somewhere that how you should go on for responding to a claim where third party is at fault. I hope this is coming to you. Now, I'll, there are certain situations when you need to write positive messages also, like uh, you want to announce some good news, you want to go on for establishing the goodwill of the organization, you want to send some congratulations, you want to write a message of appreciation to your people. What are these? Sending some condolences, what are these somewhere or the other they are positive messages wherein you want to stand with that person and you want to congratulate you want to offer some kind of help to that person now when we say positive messages yes it is more or less like routine messages but yes make sure that the excitement of that positive news should flow through your letter it should not be monotonous now coming to the next aspect the third aspect of this session that's the writing of negative messages now how you should go on for providing with the negative messages when i say negative messages it can be that either you are required to convey some bad news to the people or to the audience or somewhere you want to gain some acceptance from the people somewhere you are you know that the information is not good and you still want to make people accept that information or you want to go on for maintaining goodwill or minimizing the future on such matters. So yes, when I say negative messages, it is a planned process also. You cannot go on for writing in the haphazard manner. It needs to be a planned predetermined process wherein you should go on for planning a negative message, wherein you will be finding why, what, purpose, everything, then you will be writing it and then you will be completing. So remember, here we will be talking about purpose, drafting and here it is rewriting, fine. Now just read this statement, the enclosed statement is wrong. This is one phrase versus please verify the enclosed statement and provide a correct copy. I believe that both the information, both the sentences are talking about or conveying some negative information to the other person wherein I believe that the information was not correct and now I want this thing to be done. So these are two ways of saying the similar thing but it can be done in different manner. Conveying the negative message does not mean that you should start using wrong words, abusive words. No, it's not that. Conveying of negative message is that you should try to articulate such words which are quite positive in nature. Fine. Now, when we talk about choosing the approach for negative message that which approach we should go for direct or indirect what do you think that which is the good approach direct approach is good or the indirect approach is good see it depends on the situation it depends on the situation it depends on your personality temperament it represents on the organizational style so i will be going through with the points the very first is the bad news will bring shock what do you think if you know that the bad news is going to bring shock, which is the most adopted approach, direct or indirect? Indirect. Why? The reason is clear. 
because if I know that it is going to give a shock, I should start with a buffer thing. I should start with a neutral message rather than just giving or telling that person the direct news. What is your audience preference? Yes, either you will be going for direct or indirect approach that is also dependent on the audience's preference style. For example, if your senior wants to go or wants to have always direct messages, he prefers taking direct messages, then irrespective of the fact that whether it is a positive news or a negative message, you will be going for the direct method only or direct approach only because you know that the person prefers that style only. How important is this news to the audience? Yes. If you know that the news is quite important, go on for adopting direct approach. Why? Because they are looking for that information only. So they want that information as early as possible. So go for the direct approach. Apart from that, do you value relationship with audience? If yes, then don't go for direct approach if it is a shocking news, if it's a negative message. Avoid going for the indirect approach. Do you need immediate audience attention? For example, from last five uh, months, you are sending a message to your customer who has not completed his installments, monthly installments, he is not paying back. So after five messages, in those five messages, you adopted the indirect approach because you valued the relationship with your audience. You don't want to hurt that person. But after five messages, it's high time now. Go and adopt the direct approach because you want that immediate action should be taken care. And if you want immediate action, go for the direct approach. The last one is that what's your organizational style. Now what happens as I already quoted that sometimes it is yes, it's linked with the personal style, the personalized strategy, but certain times it is also the organization style which is based on the organization that which method you as an organization prefer. So this is how you are going to look forward to it. Now, as I said, direct approach, direct approach starts with a very clear statement of negative message. It is going to give the reasons, additional information and it is going to end on a positive note. And if I am going to go for indirect approach, you will be starting with the buffer, which can be a neutral statement or some way we can call it as non-evaluative, non-evaluative statement, right? So you'll be just starting with a general line or a general statement, which is not going to any way in, uh, indicate that what the information is all about. So you'll be starting with a buffer, you will be providing the reasons and the additional information that what's the logic behind this, what's the reason, then you will be going on for stating the negative message. For example, you want to lay off people in your organization and that's a message. You want to circulate and that's a negative news. So how you'll be starting? You'll be starting with a general uh, quotation or some saying with laying off. And then you'll be telling the reasons that see this is happening, recession is there, we are going into losses and then you will be coming up on the point wherein you'll be telling that 100 people are going to be laid off from the organization. And then you will be ending on a positive note wherein you might be looking forward for any help and all such kind of things you will be adding. So this is how you can go on for adopting an indirect approach for writing a negative message. Now, when I say negative message, again, it has certain examples. If you want to refuse some request for the employee reference or some recommendation letter, that is also a negative message that someone asked you to provide with the recommendation letter, but you are saying, sorry, I cannot go for it. So if that is the case, first and the foremost thing, don't feel obligated that you need to write the recommendation letter. No, if you believe that you cannot give reference or can give recommend letter to that person, it's okay, it's completely fine. Don't give, fine, but don't feel obligated. Be diplomatic, minimize hurt feelings. 
डोंट हर्ट दैट पर्सन किसी आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू गिव यूर रिकमेंडेशन लेटर बिकॉज आई डोंट लाइक यू नो नॉट लाइक दिस बट इन अ वेरी पोलाइट वे टैक्टफुल मैनर यू शुड गो ऑन फॉर टेलिंग दैट पर्सन दैट सी आई कैन नॉट प्रोवाइड यू विद दिस प्रेज द रीडर्स अचीवमेंट्स येस दिस इज वॉट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट दिस कैन बी दिस इज एक्चुअली रिक्वायर्ड टू सेट अ पॉजिटिव टू I'll show you the example. Suggest the alternatives. I'll tell you all these things. This is a sample. Thank you for letting me know about your job opportunity with Chilex Limited. Your internship there and as a MBA, you have worked so hard to earn should place you in an excellent position to land up in one of the best finance jobs. What I did? I praised the other person's achievements. So, achievements. this is what i should do even if i am refusing that i cannot provide you with the recommendation although we do not send out formal recommendations i am providing with the reason that why i cannot give you recommendation letter i can certainly send and now what i am doing a confirmation of your employment dates that is what i can do fine why i cannot do and what i can do and if you have not considered this already be sure to ask several of your professors what i am doing in this i am telling alternatives that what other alternative you as a person who wants recommendation letter can look forward to also i am ending on a positive note being courteous so this is how you can go on for framing your refusal letter right now moving further another situation wherein you will be going for writing a negative message that is you are rejecting the job applicant see when you are rejecting choose the words or choose the approach carefully because many a times people end up using indirect approach here but i don't think so that using indirect approach is actually not a good idea i'll tell you i'll show you the sample and i'll tell you that how it makes the difference clearly mention why applicant is not selected tell that person that this was the reason that you were not selected i'll tell you that which approach to go for close by suggesting alternatives i am coming to the sample this is the ineffective sample i'll tell you why we were so impressed with your resume and credentials your academic record as well as previous marketing experience are just what we are hoping to see till this line what inference you are getting maybe i i got the job that is what the inference i am getting right now we just didn't expect to see such sterling qualification and experience now it is even telling me more that yes i am being selected now coming on to the next paragraph after much consideration we were able to narrow down the choices to 3 oh thank god at least i am in the first 3 that's what the inference i just got it one of which was you fine completely fine that means i am selected somewhere however i am sorry to say that you were not chosen for this respective position what's this the message started with a very positive tone and somewhere till this line i was not able to make up that whether i am selected or i am not selected but in the last line those people are telling me ki see i am not been selected for this position so this is the ineffective way of telling and conveying a job rejection thank you for considering i will be just showing you the effective part thank you for considering shylex limited as the place to start your career i'm just starting with a positive note in light of the reporting complexities now imposed with emerging market regulations and professional bodies the executive team has decided it would be wise to enhance our skill base with a candidate with more industry experience i am very clear i am not an i am not having any industry experience that means i am not selected your resume show you we are deserving candidate for entry level position so now i am very clear that 
I am a fresher, I applied as a fresher. So yes, this job is not for me. This job is only for the people who have some experience. So this is quite a direct one which I got to know. Now, there are going to be the situations wherein you need to give negative reviews, negative performance reviews. See, whenever you are writing for this, always remember that make sure confront the problem right away. That see, this is the problem in you, in you it means in your work, not in your person, as a personality I am not talking about, I am talking about as a person who is performing that activity. Confront the problem, maintain an unbiased and objective tone. Don't go on for adding your emotional responses that you like the person or you dislike the person, sorry. Keep away your emotions. Don't add your emotions into this letter, into this negative message. Use non-judgmental language, plan what to say. This is actually very important. Most of the time we, are, didn't, we, are, we never plan, we never plan. That's what I want to tell the person, right? I'll just go on writing and then I end up writing all unnecessary things which were not required for me, right? So document negative feedback, deliver the message in private, that's quite important. Don't send this message to all the people in the office. No, only send the message to that person for whom it is meant. Ask employee for future improvisations. I'll just show you this another topic that's the terminating employee because you are going to be in the situations wherein you will be writing the terminating letters, termination letters. State the reason very clearly that why are you terminating? Somewhere or the other don't get into personal issues. Stay away from that. Yes, contact the HR department, the legal department of your organization that what should be mentioned, what should be the specific language or something like that and relationship on a positive tone. See, this is a sample. We regret to inform you that your employment as marketing executive has been officially terminated. Very clear, very direct in the first line itself that you have been terminated. Now reason, I am talking about the reason. It's based on your consistent poor performance in the past three months, right? You have not improved anymore. This is also written. You were already made aware by the company that the last date of the notice period issued with the final written warning would be our last day of employment. This is linked with the legal aspects because it's a termination letter. So you need to be very clear with that. Your severance payments including all unsured paid leaves will be mailed to you. So this is how you are being courteous and ending on a positive note, right? So this is the way you can frame a termination letter. Now, dear learners, I hope you are able to understand that how you should be going on for writing a business letter, whether it is a routine message or it is a positive message or it's a negative message. Even if it is a negative message, I believe that you are able to understand that your language, your tone needs to be correct, needs to be appropriate. So I hope you enjoyed the session. So thank you and happy learning. Mm -hmm.